Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken's Training. Today's training is going to be on setting up your oxygen acetylene for welding. So behind me here I've got uh, brand new tanks. This here is the oxygen tank right here. I'll put it inside of here. And this one here is an acetylene tank. Uh, We'll use this nice pretty gray one here as our brand new acetylene tank. All right, now, right here is our regulators. So we've got our regulators here, and this here is our torch handle. So I'm just going to relax the uh, Make sure there's no spring tension on the uh, on the regulators. Okay, the red one, this one's going to be acetylene. The green one, this one's going to be oxygen. Um, it'd be nice if the bottles completely coincided with the colors. Well, they do have a green here, but the red for the acetylene is not color coded for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, what else? Um, so you want to make sure you put the right one, the right regulator on the right tank. Also, the threads are going to be um, non-compatible. Generally, the threads are non-compatible. Another thing is to make this completely idiot-proof. Here on the back, if you look at these sizes, the size of the acetylene and the size of the oxygen are completely different. So you can't even mix these up anyways. So you're not going to make a mistake uh, on, that, on those grounds. Now what I believe one of these is right hand threaded and one of these is left hand threaded. I'm not, uh, I haven't uh, done this in a while so I actually don't remember which is which. So I'll just take caution when I first do it. Uh, since I'm working with compressed gas, I'll throw on some safety glasses for a little bit of personal protective equipment and I'll also just put on some, uh, some Kevlar gloves. Okay, now first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my, uh, my oxygen here and uh, rip off that cap. Now, without the regulator on there, I'm going to give it a little spurt like that. Now, why am I doing that? Because if there's any dust or any debris inside of inside of this tank I do not want that going into my regulators and I don't want that going into my torch handle so again give it a little spray just to just to give it a good blow to uh, clean it out okay I'm gonna start put this on like this turn this thing okay so you see right here Right here, I'm just going by hand. All right, so that's screwing on right hand thread. So that's a going on the normal way, which to make it simple, righty tighty, lefty loosey, I'm turning it to the right to tighten it up, okay? So let's see if this uh, adjustable wrench will do it. This is brass, so you don't want to use chance locks, you want to use a smooth jaw tool. So I'll use this one here. And when you put this on, make sure that your gauges, you can adjust this so that your gauges are in any condition, but I want my gauges to be as level as possible. So make sure your gauges are level when you tighten that out. Okay? You don't want to go too, too tight, but you want to go fairly tight with the aggressiveness of that. Okay, so now let's move over to the acetylene. Okay. Now I have to do the same thing on the acetylene that I did on the oxygen. Now the acetylene has a small square head. Now I could use my adjustable wrench, but that really flattens it out and it's not the proper tool. The proper tool, which I keep right here in my kit, is one of these right here. This is the proper tool to use to open and close the acetylene valve. Now, let me show you what the valve, this is what the valve handle looks like right here. And you'll notice on the tool, 
that there's different square sizes. This can be used also for HVAC service valves as well, but I just keep this one dedicated to my oxygen acetylene. I have a separate one in my HVAC bucket to use for service valves. Okay, now it's going to be the small square right there. So what I do is I put that small square on and now I can see that that this is a ratcheting device. When it comes up like this, if I try to go like this, it's going to tighten. I don't want to tighten that valve. I want to open that valve, so I'm going to push and depress this, bring this down, and I'm going to open this up to give this a spurt, and then I'm immediately going to change it and close it out. Again, just to get any dust out of there, because this is a brand new tank. I'm going to open it and then close it as fast as I can. Okay, that's it. That's as, that's as much time as it took me. I just wanted to give it a little push, um, push out like that. Now, let's see if these threads are right-handed thread or left-handed thread. Now, I'm going to take this here. I'm going to see if I can get this so that you can see it. I'm doing a righty-tighty right now. And indeed, it's not crossed. It's, an, it's not a different thread pattern. It's a standard thread pattern. So no, no reason to be different on that. All I'm going to do is just get my tanks, um, my, my regulator uh, gauges at a nice level uh, amount. And then I'm going to take my adjustable wrench, my 8 inch adjustable wrench, and I'm just going to tighten that down. And I want that to be level. And again, fairly snug. Okay, just like that. Nothing should be moving. Okay, so we're good to go there. I'll throw that back on the valve handle just to get that ready. Now, what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to take that tip off for a second. Put that down on the ground. All right. And on, I'm going to close these two valves here. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up my oxygen. And I'm going to open up the acetylene. I like to open up the acetylene about one turn, and on the oxygen, I open that up a um, full open and then back off of it about a half of a turn. All right, now, if you're looking at your gauges, go ahead and zoom in right here on the gauges. You'll see that on the, acet uh, the oxygen, rather, I've got a little bit more, uh, the red is in PSI on both of these, so it's the inside numbers that I'm concerned about. So this one's got 2,000 PSI in the tank. Um, on the, after the regulator, I got zero because I backed off on my spring. I'm going to go ahead and crank that down and I'm screwing that in and you'll see that I'm bringing that up. Now, what pressures do I want to do my, my heating up and my torch action with, my oxyacetylene work with? Uh, generally speaking, you could use 7 PSI and 15 PSI uh, over here. Uh, so 7 PSI on the acetylene and 15 PSI on the oxygen. You could do um, 5 PSI on the acetylene and 10 PSI on the oxygen. Those are the two most common settings that I see out there in the field. Either one is fine. Um, for today's work, let's just use a 5 PSI setting and a 10 PSI setting. So I've got actually more than 10 here. So let me open this up now. So if there's any dust in here that wasn't accumulated in my hoses without me clogging up my tip, and the small orifice is there. I'm just going to give that a blow out again. So let's double check that. Alright, I'm going to relax that a little bit. Right. So, that's 10 PSI when 
I'm actually flowing the gas out. I want 10 psi then. I don't want to set it to then. So when it's in a relaxed, so when it's in a static state like it is right now, the pressure may come up over 10. But when I'm blowing out my gas, I want at least 10 pounds uh, when I've got my correct nozzle on there. Right now I'm just kind of getting it close to my setting, blowing out any dust and getting that out of there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the acetylene. Now, come on over and look at your acetylene gauge. You'll see that, again, looking at the red inside, which is PSI, I got 250 PSI of pressure inside the acetylene tank, and I got no pressure after the regulator. I want to get five pounds on here, so I'm going to screw this down. Do you see that pop right up? Now, let's give a little bit of acetylene. All right, so we, we've got gas coming out there. I'm going to go ahead and throw my tip on. <clears throat> this tip has the uh, numerical value zero right there if you can see that so apparently this is a zero tip alright so let me go ahead and screw that down now as far as the pointing direction of this goes I like this to point away from these two valve handles so this is how I always set myself up, so that this is pointing away from these two valve handles. All right, let me go ahead and tighten that down. And just about where I want it to be. Okay, that's perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my regulator pressures one last time, Let's starting with the green. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just going to give it a little boost. Alright, so we're good there. Alright, so in the acetylene, you'll notice that right there is about 7-8 pounds. When I go and put the acetylene on, it drops down to 5. That's what I'm looking for. So. Those should be pretty good setup for me to achieve a good flame coming out of here. Now, I'm getting ready to actually light it off in order to see what this flame is going to look like. Now, for me to do that, there's a couple precautions that I want to take. Number one, I'm just going to take the oxygen acetylene setup. I'm going to keep that away from me so that um, reasonably safe from if there's a leak of uh, or something like that I don't want to have an open flame cracking while I got a leak going so I don't want that to happen okay so I've got a, also I've got a bucket of water near me I've got a fire extinguisher near me this is just a tank of nitrogen which is an inert gas no problem um, but let's go ahead and light it off now when I do my light off First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the acetylene, the red. I'm going to open up the acetylene. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to light that off. And then I'm going to adjust my flame from there. So let's go. Open that. Open that. Now I'm going to cut that back until I see some feathering and a little bit of black smoke right there. Now I'm going to introduce the oxygen. For my little half inch welding, that's a pretty good flame just like that I've got a small inner cone going on right there and then and then the flame pattern out here so when I, um, I'm gonna be welding this type of a product on my next job half inch copper this flame right here is plenty good of a flame for me to do that without utilizing a lot of excess gas uh, the oxygen and the acetylene. So, and now when I want to go and shut this off, I'll go ahead and kill my oxygen and then my acetylene like this. And I'll do it fairly quickly. Here we go. Just like that. And now, now it's in a safe static condition. Uh, if uh, I'm going to be welding here soon, but if I was going to stay off for a long period of time, what I would do, well, let me, let me take you through the steps. Let's say you're done welding. And you're, now you want to go back to a static, restful state. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, I've already got my flame off. I'm going to go ahead and isolate my oxygen. You can do either one, the oxygen or the acetylene. All right. Both of these valves are off. Okay. I'm going to bleed the pressure out here, opening both oxygen and acetylene. And now that's going to, that stopped hissing. And now I'm also going to relax my spring tension off of my regulators so that my regulators don't have constant spring tension on, at, on them at all times. Then I just take my little wrench, put it back in my kit here, and I'm at a static zero condition and everything is fine. So this is the way you want to break the system down when you're done welding or heating up or whatever, you, whatever, whatever uh, oxyacetylene work you're trying to do for that day. This is the proper way to shut it down, isolate it. Of course, I would wrap up my hoses, make everything nice and pretty. But um, I'm getting ready to start a job here. So that was just a demonstration that I wanted to do on how to start with, an, with the tanks. Proper way to put your regulators on. Make sure that you blow out the dust. Put your regulators on. Make sure you don't cross-thread them. Very important. You don't want to cross-thread these regulators. You'll mess that up. And then you'll have to purchase a new regulator and possibly uh, a new uh, exchanger tank if you messed up those threads. So you want to be very careful. And I always start that by hand before you put on a smooth jaw wrench. So it's either going to be this 12-inch uh, wrench or an 8-inch wrench, depending upon which regulator you're dealing with. And, uh, but basically, that's it. Thank you for watching.